A terrible hurricane going on right now in the Gulf of Mexico. It is a very small and compact system. And what I'll do is I'm going to switch this over and move over to this camera shot here. Uh, we are looking at a major hurricane, Category 5 on the Sanford Simpson scale. It has a very small, compact eye, and these systems that have that smaller, compact nature can ramp up very quickly. And with the rapid intensification that's occurred today, we've gone from a Category 1 at 1 a.m to a category five here this evening. It's gone, winds have doubled. They've gone from 90 to 180 and the pressure is falling. We have the new update from the National Hurricane Center as of the seven o'clock advisory here for you as well. And it is a category five on the Saffir Simpson scale. The environment continues to look very moist. There is some drier air to the north and west and that will come into play later. But for now, we expect it to maintain its strength as a major hurricane and possibly may do so all the way up until landfall. Winds at 180, it's category five, and the pressure 897. So we were at 906 with the pressure as of the four o'clock advisory. Now we're at 897, and the motion is east at about 10 miles an hour. The water temperatures support intensification in the short term. Uh, there is usually a tongue of water temperatures that are not quite as warm right off the north east tip of the Yucatan and this may move through that region briefly before moving back out over the Gulf Loop current which has recovered nicely with the water temperatures in the wake of Hurricane Helene. All right so how does it rate on the scale known as the Saffir Simpson scale? Saffir Simpson scale is a pretty inadequate scale. It only rates hurricanes based on the maximum sustained winds. It does not take into account the potential impacts. And right now it is above 157, so it is a cat five. And what kind of impacts will we see and where is it going? So let's look at the forecast track here and we have it tracking across the southern gulf right off the tip of the Yucatan. I doubt it comes ashore on the Yucatan. I guess that's possible because it has wobbled a little to the right, but uh, looking at it, we expect it to generally be over the warm waters of the gulf, and it could easily be a cat four or five hurricane up through tomorrow afternoon. There's the potential that shear and dry air will weaken it some as it's making its approach to Florida's coast, but I don't expect a lot of change in the intensity because as we saw with Hurricane Katrina, Katrina, as it worked its way in, it was a category three, but it had the surge of five. So a lot of times these storms develop the storm surge way out in the Gulf, and when they come ashore, they're still going to come ashore with that type of surge if it only weakens over the last 12 hours or so right before landfall. So this is an alarming situation. We may have an expanding wind field too for Florida's peninsula, meaning it could actually get larger as it weakens. I know that seems counterintuitive, but the size of a hurricane matters a lot. And the wider the wind field, the more areas that will be infected and the longer those areas would be impacted. Uh, here is the latest graph model. This is our in-house future cast. It did really well with Hurricane Helene. This is not an exact forecast. It's just one suggested outcome, one set of suggested outcomes, but it gives you a good idea of how you can visualize what this thing would look like. And so what the future cast does is it, it emulates the way the radar and the satellite would look as it's working across the Gulf. And we see the potential for a wider eye on Wednesday. You can see the eye gets larger. That's that expansion of the wind field. We do expect shear and dry air to perhaps knock out some of the convection on the south side of the storm, but it may not change the winds much. And we still expect it to be a major hurricane at landfall. We've got it close to making landfall at around 10 p.m. on Wednesday night. And if it hits around Tampa, the surge could be significant from Fort Myers to Sarasota and all the way up to Tampa. This is a highly populated part of Florida's coast. Now, will we see impacts here? Well, we're going to have rough surf and we will have rip currents and the rip current danger will be high at our beaches. But 
we expect to see a dry air front moving through. And so you'll notice temperatures around 64 degrees tomorrow morning in Mobile. And the mornings will get better as things go on. Now we could see some breezy conditions here with northeast winds on Wednesday but the core of the storm over the eastern gulf and then we have it coming ashore. This is the GFS model around midnight very similar to what our graph future cast showed and then it works up towards Florida's Atlantic coast and the core of the heavy winds will not be offshore until Thursday based on this model here. This will deepen the trough a little and allow for lows in the 50s here by the end of the week and into the weekend. All right, model tracks. This is the spaghetti model. These are the spaghetti model plots and most of those are within the cone and there's still a pretty wide spread of models, anywhere from Crystal River all the way down to, it looks like about the Fort Myers area. So, still some uncertainty as to where it'll exactly come ashore, and there'll certainly be that situation, especially because of the angle the storm is approaching and the orientation of the coastline. There could be quite a bit of difference in landfall outcomes but ultimately we expect this small compact wind field to grow in size and you can see that happening here and then especially here the tropical storm force winds could extend from near Miami and south of Chokoloski all the way up past Jacksonville and into southern Georgia which is a much larger wind field and the hurricane force winds you know I expect a really strong tropical storm by the time this thing moves out over Florida's Atlantic coast but they still will be a factor. What about storm surge? Well, I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to zoom out. So right now the Tampa area around 12 feet could be as high as 15 feet. There is also anywhere where you see the purple, the potential of that 12 foot surge. So that includes Pine Island and up to the close to the Steenhatchee River. And also very importantly, Sarasota, Venice, Fort Myers, um, areas down near Boca Grande, Cape Coral, a lot of this area here uh, could be heavily impacted. So we are looking at areas even well south of Tampa with significant surge and even significant surge down around Marco Island and Chokoloski. I know that's a long ways off from where the center comes ashore, but it could be problematic. All right, I wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to see locally while our neighbors to the east and south will see potentially a substantial hurricane. We have some delightful weather tonight. Our lows will be down around 60 in Citronelle, Baymanette at 61. You probably won't need a jacket tomorrow morning in Baldwin County, but we still will see very cool morning lows. And in Pensacola at 65, but 60 in Walnut Hill and Jay. So we're really cashing in on some early October weather here. And this is our first real big cool air push of the fall season. 55 in Thomasville, 58 in Grove Hill, 60 in McIntosh, 59 in Fruitdale, Leakesville at around 60 in the morning, 60 in Loosedale, and 65 in Pascagoula. What a great front. And there's more where this came from. While we are looking at potential catastrophic impacts from a major hurricane to our south and east, look at our seven day forecast. Beautiful sunny skies. Thursday and Friday, the lows will start trending uh, in the 50s. We could have 50s in the mornings, and this is down near the coast. 83 for a high Friday, 81 Saturday. So expect a much better weather pattern for us but it's just not a good situation having such a substantial hurricane in the Gulf. If you're just joining us live, I want to put the coordinates and statistics up for you here. 180 with the winds, category five, pressure 897. So the pressure has fallen. We may see a little increase in the winds just based on that pressure fall. And the track includes most of Florida's Gulf Coast on the west side of the peninsula. So that's going to be from the Big Bend down to Cape Coral. This does not include Destin or Pensacola, but it will be a serious situation. Could be a catastrophic situation for Central Florida and South Florida. Something to watch as we go through the next two days. We'll be closely tracking Milton here on Fox 10 News. 
on our social platforms and also on Fox 10 News tonight at 9 and in the morning with meteorologist Matt Barentine on our morning show. We'll continue to monitor Milton very closely for you here on Fox 10. All right, I'm going to leave this up so you can see the satellite picture for a second. Thanks for joining us.